I'm gonna take my life. Chief Wood is on the air. Where do we go from there? Next for Sally and Ford's finale, but frankly, Frank doesn't care. We really hate our life. Just to take your mind for a moment off the uh, thunderstorm situation that we're putting up with day after day, let's think about it. Hey, come on. Come on, machine. <laughs> Ridiculous. Did you set this up? <laughs> Push it down. Oh, the bottom. Ah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. We got, it. We, we, got, we got the great portals open. How about that? So you couldn't tell one coat from the other. Well, anyway, Tropical Wave is right out here in the extreme edge of the carrier. You know, the shower activity in South Florida has been gradually decreasing during the hour, but there's still a lot out there. Let's, uh, oh my heavens. Oh, no. We got it down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't know I had the strength. <laughs> Our match. Still ahead from the news center tonight, uh, we have a movie, Summer Rental. It's uh, opening this weekend, living proof once again that successful films can be shot in Florida. In this case, St. Petersburg, News Center 7's entertainment reporter Peter Lundquist talks about the film and talks with one of its stars. Light pictures today. We had kind of an interesting uh, situation. Uh, oh, well, hello. Hey, Kukla? Kukla, where's Ollie? Oh, he's not dressed. Oh, well, Fran can't make it either, so let's do the weather. We heard some rumbling over North Bay Village. Look out, here it comes. Go ahead and open it, what the heck. Uh, we've got some pretty heavy thunderstorms uh, right over North Bay Village in the northern part of Dade County. Those are moving toward the west at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Connor, what are the problems? Well, problems, the Peter, the, well, Peter, the problems are sudden acceleration and engine surge. Art or pornography? Dr. Neil Frank from the National Hurricane Center, and he's agreed to join us once again, as we often do during hurricanes. Uh, Dr. Frank, uh, a lot of people wondering what's going on. I mean, is there a chance that this might turn around? There, there is okay, say again, I didn't hear that question. Okay, I understand. Uh, the fight against cavities is sparking a major battle amongst toothpaste makers. Kevin Rosen is standing by live now with our new Star 7 satellite in Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. Be out on my packet. Kevin, how's it? Hello, Let's Kevin. See. Kevin, Gloria what's it like up there? Gloria paid, paid a visit here. But something like she was. Obviously, Kevin wasn't quite ready for us. We'll have him stand by and pitch to him a little bit later on if he's still available. And the countdown is underway not only for the community campaign here in Key Biscayne for the United Way, but also for Hands Across Broward, which, uh, which is going to be held this Saturday. So we have five days until that happens. Totally uncontrollable out here, so I'll throw it back to you, Peter and Sally. <laughs> Looks like a forest of hands there, doesn't it? He does have a way with children. <laughs> he does. His Hands Across Bob this afternoon. <laughs> Look like Bob. Bye-bye. <laughs> to an easy victory here in the first set and probably throughout the rest of this tournament. They forced us to turn the lights off here, and they want me to shut up, so I gotta send it back to you, Brett. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Excellent, excellent restraint on your part. We appreciate that. Butter is not better. Butter isn't better. It rhymes. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, John. Good morning. An Italian luxury liner, <clears throat> pardon me, an Italian luxury liner has become the latest target of terror in the Middle East. Palestinian gunmen are holding an estimated 400 people hostage on board the Achille Laura. is also under investigation. Come to me on uh, camera one. Thank you. Tonight, Governor Bob Graham ordering an investigation into inmate autopsies at the University of Florida. Good morning again. Sophie Chasser is back home in Hollywood promising to never again visit the Middle East. Possibly, they say, by spraying the area. Peter? Thank you, Cecilia. They don't need any more problems, do they? 
Cecilia Fernandez reporting live from Sky Camp Salem. Donate all of the money that they wanted to, but there's something more important than that, and what is it? Well, it's people's time and uh, personal involvement that's that's so very important. The, the time and personal involvement, you know, we can, of course, the city can always get money by raising taxes. But Fire broke out right here in our studio. Ten minutes into the newscast, flames roared up a wall 25 feet from our news desk. If you listen carefully, you'll hear cameramen turning fire extinguishers on the blaze as our anchor is through to a commercial break. And our apologies, apparently still a little trouble this morning. We'll get to that tape for you in just a minute. But first, let us now turn to Bill Ross with a look at our forecast. Here's Dave Slater with our first traffic report this morning. David? What can go wrong will go wrong. Things, however, are back to normal this morning at a South Broward Middle School. 700 students and teachers were evacuated Thursday afternoon. And now we will take a look at Peter Ford's package on that fire that hit Channel 7 last night. And we still don't have it. I'm really sorry about this. We'll try to get to it later on. As for Jordan's view, our NBC News correspondent Henry Champ is in Amman. That's right. In, uh, in Amman, Jordanian officials and the newspapers reported this morning that they saw nothing new in Israel's proposal. On to baseball. Could be wet tomorrow night in Kansas City for game one of the World Series between the Royals and the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a 20% chance of rain at game time after a 70% chance of rain during the day. Temperatures should be in the 60s. Now, the Royals boast the most dominant player in the playoffs. And he looks a lot like uh, Ken O'Brien of the New York Jets. Actually, no, his name is George Brett. And George wanted to play football at one time in his life, but, of course, they wouldn't give him a scholarship. And uh, that's Freeman McNeil. Does anybody have the, uh, like, World Series, George Brett playing baseball, huh? What do you think? Can we look at him? Because uh, we're going to talk, I'd rather talk with Don Shula about uh, those uh, football players we just saw. You know, there's just times you say it doesn't work. It'll work tomorrow, it'll go well. But it's just not happening today. Why don't we um, move on to uh, football, uh, the Don Shula show? Because as you may have noticed, the uh, Dolphins are in action. In fact, they'll be in action this Sunday against Tampa Bay. Coach Shula didn't find the tape we saw all that funny, and we'll talk about what happened last Monday night against the New York Jets and what's coming up against Tampa Bay right after this. I think we can tempt Sally? Uh, Torsion had a show. We've got time, lady. All right. Oh. <laughs> Excuse the other end of this. That was cool. Usually this is so salty. Well, the salt is not very salty. I said it's good. She likes it. <laughs> not as bad as some I've tasted. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. News Center 7's Michael Williams reporting live by Instacam from South Point Park on Palm Beach, um, excuse me, on Miami Beach. Beach. Jones reported to the North Dade Correctional Facility this morning. A sad old story in New England for the Dolphins. The highlights on Sunday Video Sports Extra. Participating on Saturday. So, neat kids, thanks a lot for, uh, for coming out with us. As NBC's John Nancy reports tonight, now a real tug of war has developed. Apparently, we're not ready with that yet. We'll try to get to it when we can. And in Palm Beach, the hoopla is already underway in anticipation of the royal visit. Kathy Fountain is there tonight for a look at what's in store. Here's her report via our New Star 7 satellite. I'm Brett Lewis. Coming up in sports, what do you care what's coming up in sports? We're going to die. It's a hurricane. Get run for your lives. Get out of here. We're crying out loud. We're going to die. We're going to die. What do you care who won? It's going to the Orange Bowl. It doesn't matter. These are the most likely target for Hurricane Kate sometime tomorrow. New Center 7's Brian Cabell is standing by live now with our New Star 7 satellite in Key West. 
Brian, how does it look there? I think we just lost sound of Brian. We may, we'll come back to Brian. He's uh, at Key West. He's, uh, we do have a, a video link, as you saw. We have lost sound. We'll try and get back to Brian as soon as possible. Steaming them, maybe microwaving them, maybe stir frying them, even baking them. Well, those are all better ways to retain their nutritional value. So in answer to the question, compared to fresh vegetables, are frozen vegetables, do they have fewer nutrients, more nutrients, or the same number of nutrients? The answer is they have about the same. When I'm in the hospital, I always use Kerry lotion for dry skin care. <laughs> it's so good, dry? so moist, and it makes such nice noises when you, when you use it. You see what I mean? Kerry lotion. White balance. White balance on his pillow. You want a white balance? <laughs> Let me get a white balance, okay? <laughs> A little late, but nevertheless, he's Slow here. Slow but sure. Slow but sure, yes. Try to do the best we can with what we've got. Excuse me, I'll have to go over here to get this, and I'll go right up to the map. Okay. Shall we just go right to the currents? That's the best thing to do. Okay. Hey, that's a pretty. Make it southeasterly around 15 knots, see three to five feet, a moderate chop on the bays, and the tides, well, you can see them there and meet them for yourselves. Enjoy. Sunrise and sunset, just what you would expect. <laughs> Old people should not have to run back and forth from the studio to the weather room and back again. Let me tell you, I am so glad you got back here. I was trying to figure out how I was going to do the weather, and I don't have a clue in the world. I made the last 50 feet on my hands and knees. Did you see that? It was terrible. It was disgusting. We're all very proud of you. Well, thank you. Bill Police say the victim's truck got stuck on the tracks when the barriers were lowered. The train couldn't stop. No word yet on the victim's identity. Send Napoleon packing into exile, but by gosh, that's right, snowballs at me. But by gosh, it didn't do, and the Dolphins didn't end their playoff drive. The reason being, hey, cold weather is just a state of mind. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of good. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Peter. News Center 7's Peter Lundquist report. And coming up next from the News Center, a search is underway for a missing Carl Gables woman. And a truck accident on I-95 backs up north and southbound traffic. I'm Here's John's night side report. The Statue of Liberty celebrates... <clears throat> tonight, uh, I can't talk. You're going to have to take a beat. <laughs> well, tonight, a 70-year-old resident says he started the fire, but he won't say why. He's been admitted for psychiatric tests, and no charges have been filed. Well, that was the strangest feeling to get something caught in your throat when you're doing a newscast. But uh, weathered that storm, everything's fine now. All right. The, the game will be released later this month. It's perfect for Vice fans who get bored during commercial breaks. You know, the game costs three ninety five, dollars but the designer carrying case is 750 bucks. Didn't know that, but you know, it's mm -hmm. a great way to teach our young people uh, the fine art of drug trafficking. Uh, I don't know, what's our world coming to? That's our report to the moment. In this country, postal inspectors in Miami have broken a multi-million dollar fraud ring. Carmel Cafiero of WSVN reports. And whatever you do, don't call Ronnie West handicapped. He was born without arms. I'm inspired. He sure is an inspiration. Yeah. I don't see how he can do that. You really have to hand it to him. Well, the thing is, you... Well, for more on that, we go on to Penn Station in New York. Provoking, and I don't think it's necessary to demonstrate our power that way. You don't think it was necessary? In the Everglades. I'm Sally Fitz. I like <laughs> They said it was loud. It is. <laughs> you know, I, sh I thought we'd put the money in the uh, parking meter. They're a little stiff if you don't want to do it. Let's go. For Bob, Brett, Dan, and all of us on the New Center 7 team, including the cannoneer back there, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Up here on the shores of New York Harbor, it's Kutzpah. And Willie Smith seems to have it in spades. He's got, uh, he's been on uh, charge with cocaine possession and holding a concealed weapon. And the first thing he does is hold a press conference. Uh, yes, indeed. He did hold the press conference. Uh, he talked a little bit. His attorney talked a whole lot more. And Willie Smith's attorney said today his client is innocent of criminal charges. But the one gram of cocaine in the revolver found in his car belonged to a woman hitchhiker that he had never met before. And Bain Inland Waters, have a moderate chop. I'm Julie Feldman. Get out and enjoy the day. Now let's go back to Good Morning America. So we're going to keep an eye on that. And tomorrow night... Uh, <laughs> right in front of the camera. Way to go. My guest tonight is Dr. George Crane of Physicians United for Health Cost Reform. He is in our outdoor studio. Welcome, Dr. Crane. Uh, my name is Dr. Frank, Dr. Simon Frank. I apologize, sir. Apparently there's been some mix-up, but we've got that straight now. Let's... Uh, uh, 
Dr. William Iscoffrey from James Archer Smith Hospital in Homestead joins us live from the airport Hilton, Hilton, where the meeting just broke up. What did you decide, Dr. Iscoffrey? What's the position you're going to take on Monday's meeting? Brett? Oh, yeah, great quote. We came here to win the game. Whoa! A yeah, good argument against incest and inbreeding, isn't it? I suppose. Uh, everybody killing everybody else? There are probably a lot of good arguments against that, yeah. I guess so. We'll take it up some other time. Sure. Thank you, Brett. Well, this time of year has a lot of special days, Super Bowl and snow. Coming up next, Live at Five. I'm Dan Tashotti out here on Watson Island on the 10th anniversary of the day that it snowed in South Florida. Well, you know, you hear that and your first thought is, well, how do I go about measuring all that to make sure I'm getting all those proportions? The diet ought to tell you if it... Part one of our special report, Growing Up Gay, tomorrow. Live at 5. Also tomorrow, coping with breast cancer. Dave Barry from the Miami Herald. But it's amazing to walk around here. A few years ago, people didn't like know <laughs> what syndication. We're live on here, and that's, that's just a, you know, a magical hand that appears. <laughs> now, maybe you and I, we could bust this big guy up here. We could take over yeah, entertainment yeah. tonight, man. Hey, you and I could be this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, Barry. Oh, God. What, 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 Mr. Oh, no, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love, this is a great show. Ah! Mary uh, and John, good luck. Thanks very much uh, for joining us live at 5. We'll see you tonight, I think, at 7.30. To help protect the officials here and the others. Today, the Tourist and Development Council started surveying hotels to check out to see just how many students are, are here. Yes, we are. This is live television. Stay out of the way, please. Okay. It's getting wild out here already. We're predicting a week ahead. It's I think we're getting it right wild, here. I'll tell you one thing. Thanks very much. Anyway, the Tourist and Development Council is surveying the hotels to see how many students are here. They're finding right now the smaller hotels are packed. The larger hotels are also packed. So it should be a big spring break. Peter and Sally, you can take this thing back. Thank you, Pat. Box pot the item. Voice of the people. You handled that pretty well, Patrick. Well, that's live television, I guess. <laughs> Thank Senator you. Seven's Patrick Fraser reporting live from Fort Lauderdale. The word on spring break in Miami Beach is pretty... The students are roping off the high school logo in the highway in the middle of the school. They say that... It... Uh, uh, Cecilia, have a nice afternoon. Looks like you're having a lot of fun there. Yeah, those kids are calm, aren't they? <laughs> That's Cecilia Fernandez reporting live, I'm sure, from Hylia High School. For deregulation. I'm Peter Lundquist on this. These stories and more are coming up on the 6 o'clock hour of News Center 7. Check your Saturday newspaper for a partial list of marks. Saturday's in-store warehouse sale only at your nearby Coffin and Roberts store. Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 25th. Most are in Daytona Beach. And that's where New Center 7's Don Dare is right now, reporting to us live via Skycom 7. Don, what is it like up there? Well, Peter, there are no spring break blues being sung here in Daytona. This town is sizzling with activity. This is a New Center 7 news break. I'm Sally Fitz. I'm Peter Ford from the New Center tonight. After numerous court delays, a man wanted for questioning in Britain's biggest gold heist is on his way back to Scotland Yard. 
Am I? Are, you? are we on? Okay. All of us, whether we know it or not, have taken a position on animal rights. If you've ever so much as swatted a fly, you have killed an animal. So the question is, where do you draw the line? When, where do you draw the line? In exactly which situations does the benefit to humans? What are you doing standing around for? <laughs> It was great. Can I say that? That's beautiful. Are you a roller? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it. Lest you be faced with a boring weekend, we have labored long to compile a list of free things to see and do. We call it Friday Free 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 Okay, Trevor Burbick, thanks a lot for being with us, and good luck to you in your future. Thank you. All right, Brett, if anything wild happens in the next few minutes, we will certainly pass it along. So long, Trevor. We will certainly pass it along before the newscast ends. You know, the polls have not been too kind to you. <laughs> you no, have... Denise, you're wrong. Uh, no? The last poll uh, included last week of CBS and New York Times showed me in third position. Well, that's doing a lot better than you were early on, when the polls were saying you had uh, less than 3%. Now, Den Denise, wait a minute. Uh, George Bush has been running for 12 years, Jack Kemp and Bob Dole for eight years, respectively. I threw my hat in the wing ring two weeks ago, so I think I'm doing rather well. Who would you say are your constituents? I hope it's the American people. After you have conceded, though, that you do have an image problem. What is I it in your point of so, view, and what do you have to do about it? No, I hope you find me as charming as I find you, because <laughs> <laughs> this is a heart as big as all outdoors. I've said that repeatedly. Came out and brought them back into Isle Morada, where they are right now. The four men all say they have... Four Cuban refugees now on Isle Morada. We had uh, problems with that satellite, and we'll have more for you tonight at 11. Bob Soper has the night off. Don Franklin is with us, though. He's in our outdoor studio with a weather update. Don? He's somewhere out there, we think, right? Apparently not. Well, well, I can tell you this. It was a very nice weekend, a bit cloudy today, but the, some sunshine did get through. We'll get to Don Frank a little bit later. Right now, though, we will go to Jill Beach, who is definitely in our outdoor studio. Jill? I am, and I can tell you one thing about the weather, Frank. It's warm out here. A fierce storm rolled through South Florida this afternoon with high winds, heavy rains, and at least two tornadoes. News Center 7's Patrick Frazier is standing by live in Carroll City, where some of the heaviest damage is being reported. Patrick? They got their paperwork from their employers just days ago. If you've yet to drop your 1986 personal income tax return in the mail and have not filed with the IRS to get an additional four months to prepare... If you're one of these people who are rushing to meet the deadline, our tax expert Paul Strassels has some last-minute advice. If you've yet to drop your 1986 personal income tax return in the mail, thing I'm sure of is that I'm sick of white wine and pate. What about sushi? No, no. Wait a second. That sounds like it's time for the network feed. There it is. Look, it's a news promo. Watch Richard Harkness and the news. That's not right. Try again. I'm Tom Brokaw. I've got it now. NBC. It doesn't take a Dr. Zarkov to figure this out. It's the start of the shared news campaign. Follow me, Dale. I'll show you how it works. Promotion is so exciting. I just hope the chief likes it. He's got to. My Lord Station Chief, a shared news campaign. What will this accomplish and at what cost? More than you dare hope for less than you'd expect. All right, let's see what it is you brought me. I'm Tom Brokaw. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the PTL tries to raise money on the auction block, a baby grand, a classic car, and an air-conditioned doghouse. And on News for Mongo, the dreaded lobster bisque runs wild through the streets of the capital. What can be done to curb the emperor's favorite pet?
NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw, followed by news for Mongo. You've done it! Our ratings will go through the roof! He likes he it. He really likes it. Well, Flash Dale, isn't the shared news promo campaign exciting? Oh, well, never mind. I just hope she never finds out why they call him Flash. President Reagan is expected to announce tomorrow night that he is ordering American negotiators in Geneva to accept the Soviet proposal to eliminate all medium and short-range nuclear missiles from Europe. And Secretary of State Schultz told the Russian people in a taped interview on television today there is a good chance for a missile agreement. But Schultz was followed on TV by a Russian commentator who charged he was guilty of deliberate and exaggerated optimism. Bernhard Getz has been acquitted on all charges of attempted murder and assault. Getz shot and wounded four youths in a New York City subway in December 1984, saying it was self-defense. That case of Bernhard Getz has attracted attention throughout the nation. Jennifer McLogan of NBC News has been covering the report. Here is her report. Sorry, we lost that report. We'll have it in just a few minutes later in our report. Getz, however, is uh, facing a number of charges. One he was uh, convicted on was a minor one for possessing a gun, but it's not believed that he will face any prison sentence for that minor uh, a conviction. As we said at the top of the show, Bernard Getz has been acquitted on the major charges of attempted murder and assault. This, too, in our program this evening, the story of AIDS and the priesthood. Kansas City is leading Texas 3 to nothing. They are in the ninth inning. Minnesota is trailing Detroit 10 to 6. They are in the ninth. And <laughs> Sally, I've always wanted you to see that particular score. You see, I, we know that I'm a Ranger fan, but we didn't have to blot out Sally to see it, but I think it was good. Uh, Detroit is leading Minnesota in the ninth. Did I tell you about that? Atlanta and Chicago postponed because of rain. St. Louis over Houston 5 to 4. It was New York beating Los Angeles 3 to 2. Pittsburgh down Cincinnati 6 to 5. And Montreal and San Diego are late, and the Giants beat the uh, Philadelphia Phillies 2 to nothing. and that's sports. <laughs> a 12-year-old Brevard County boy is in the hospital tonight recovering from a vicious shark attack. Witnesses say Gary Critlow was, was waiting in about 30 feet, uh, waiting in water about 30 feet from the shore at Satellite Beach when a shark ripped into his left leg. When Gary pulled back, the four-foot shark swam away. The doctors who performed six hours of emergency surgery on him say it will be about a month before Gary's leg, at, before Gary's leg can heal. Sounds like he's going to have a miserable weekend. But you don't need to worry about your weekend getting rained out. Bob Soper's up next with the tail. Overall, the odds of winning a prize. Hi, are you going to buy one of these? Very, very good. Are you going to buy one America. of these uh, lottery tickets in about an hour? She might. I don't think she speaks English. She's. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. no, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't okay. know. What, do you speak French? I'm, no, I'm, I'm speaking okay. some English and some German. Okay, let me finish this up. The odds of winning a prize are about one in four winning a small prize. What the, kind of prize? Well, you can win a lot of money $5, $20. The chances of winning a million dollars, though, are pretty slim. Sally and Peter. Stand by. Yes, <laughs> company there. And this is the scene right now at the lottery kickoff ceremonies at Bayside. And this is the scene at the lottery kickoff ceremonies at the Broward Mall and Plantation. Everybody, everybody around me was screaming, and I just couldn't believe it until I got home. Then it kind of like Good afternoon. Well, we've had some audio problems there, but we'll see if we can get it straightened out. We're well, sorry about that. Join us again at 11 for uh, more sports from Brad Lewis. He'll be back here for that. Yeah, California plus, sir. All right, get lots of rest, folks, because we got to go all the way if they do as well. That's the story from uh, New Hampshire here tonight. Vice President George Bush, an impressive victory for him. And a second place finish for Bob Dole that didn't leave him very happy. Third place for Jack Kemp on the Republican side.
one to three inches of snow is likely, and then it goes up another trip up the Rockies in western Montana, and they'll probably get a pretty good dump out of this uh, system as well. In the middle of the nation, high pressure dominates right now, likely to continue throughout tomorrow. You'll see the man that you beat tonight. That's uh, Senator Bob Dole, who is standing by in his headquarters. Anything you'd like to say to him at this point? No, just wish him well and meet him in the South. And Senator Dole, is there anything you'd like to say to the vice president? Yeah, stop lying about my record. Well, it sounds like uh, we're setting it up for uh, what's going to happen in uh, Super Tuesday. No, that's fine. We're ready. You were a television evangelist. You often said that you had God's advice on specific decisions that you had to make. Do you get his advice as well on specific well, political decisions? Tom, How does that... I'd, I'd like to point out to you, if you don't mind, I think it's the last time that I want to be called a television evangelist. I've been a TV broadcaster. I run the fifth largest cable network in America, and I'm, I'm, I'm on 37 million households with cable, which uh, rivals a lot of the so-called big boys. And because I am a religious broadcaster and have talked to people on major issues that's why they have given me this tremendous victory in Iowa and I, I really believe that henceforth the religious bigotry that that question of yours implies is going to be a dead issue I don't like it and I think out of Iowa they're saying you're a serious candidate and I'm going to run as a serious candidate with all due respect Mr. Yes. Robertson there was no <laughs> religious bigotry well, expressed all right. at all well, there. I, it, you're it a religious because, I'll, I'll accept yeah, your language you. you're a religious broadcaster I'll accept that and speaks for itself. Still to come from the news center, a national, a national newsman checks on Miami's crack narcotics unit. Well, up next, cashing in on nudity. We'll explain when we come back. I'm Jeff Michael. And I'm Denise White. Coming up. WSVN Channel 7, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Good evening. Our top story tonight, Miami Beach police calling one of the sickest people they've ever come across. We'll have that story in just a moment. Pedro Alvarez is accused of brutally beating a Miami woman and her two little girls and then raping one of the youngsters. A Some of those storms now reaching up to about 47,000 feet in the atmosphere. Again, not severe, but heavy. So don't worry too much about it. This is kind of an interesting map. Shows you pretty well what's going on. If we could just reverse the colors, maybe, we'll see better. Well, we're having a little trouble, I think, with the old computer. Maybe got hit by lightning. Plenty of lightning around as well throughout the late evening hours. So if you have to venture out, do be careful. Here's your forecast, then, in detail. For the rest of the evening, expect the possibility of shower. News Center 7's Linda Zoman has followed the trial from the beginning and is standing by at the Broward County Courthouse now with more. Linda. Well, the verdict came in late last night after six and a half hours of deliberation, the jury deciding Saad and Gada Tarani. Meanwhile, here are some of the other stories we're following for you here in the newsroom. Well, these are some of the, we having some tape problems here, but I understand we have our tape corrected now. These are some of the stories we're working on for you tonight. Well, that's okay. It's Friday. We'll hear more from Sally and also from Rick Sanchez again at 6. Fort Lauderdale was not alone in bringing honors home to Florida. Winter Park also received an honorable mention. The Hialeah Latin Chamber of Commerce also sponsored its second World Latin Fair this weekend. At the Miami Convention Center, more than 100 local and national companies displayed. Apparently, we have the wrong video up right now. We're going to toss on that story and try to bring it to you a little bit later. News Center 7's crime specialist Ralph Page joins us now with some thoughts on that. You've looked into this a number of times, Ralph. Ralph, you, um, Ralph I'm Ralph. <laughs> so, you recall several months ago that we did a series on auto theft and we want to... Well, let's follow with something that is not controversial. Let's go to Bob Soper in the weather. We'll do that in just a moment. First, some special students find the road to success is paved with green. Just misleading investment ads. And you'll see how a local co-ed Little League team is kicking the pants off the all-boys team. So Supervised by George Bader with Lottery Security and Richard Lamb of Beat Parwick. With tonight's three randomly selected cash three machines, here's Grace Ladd. Each machine has ten balls, zero through nine. The drawing starts by mixing the balls in the first machine. 
have a malfunction in our drawing program. We are going to postpone the drawing for tonight's winning number and correct the problem. We will then continue the drawing and display tonight's winning numbers as soon as possible. Say bye bye, Barbie. Oh! <laughs> Say bye bye. Brett Lewis is on assignment with the United States Pan American baseball team in Cuba, and tonight Jerry Sandusky is joining us live from Joe Robbie Stadium. Jerry uh, was open to the media today for the first time since the stadium, uh, since construction on the stadium began last year. I have no mic. I have no mic. They don't have Jerry, as you can hear, Jerry has no mic, so for a few moments we're going to chat here until Jerry gets his mic fixed. Rain will move east to the Mississippi Valley, the eastern Great Lakes, and we'll have a boater taking a little cruise, I'm sure, across sections of the open waters. High pressure will move off the coast, and we'll have a little bit of shower activity along. I'm going to tell us what that boat picture was, because I have the foggiest idea. <laughs> radar right now, a lot of the scattered shower activity that we spotted earlier, just about where it has been. You can just barely get a look at it offshore and a little bit on the inland side. Everything moving toward the southwest. Take a look at that satellite loop, and I'll show you one last glance at Hurricane Debbie moving away. Perhaps we will see that. Well, perhaps we won't. Well, yeah, perhaps we will. Son of a gun. There she is, moving far away from any body. It's 425 miles to the west-southwest of Sable Island. Now, that's way, way up by Nova Scotia. At the top of every field, there's room for only one. In the field of savings and loans, Home Savings of America is that one. Pork chop, hamburger, steak. I've never been equated with beef before. When it comes to unusual jobs complete with danger and adventure, this one isn't bad, but Bob Chrisman's job has to rank right up there near the top. <laughs> See, Bob Chrisman cleans faces. Not just any faces, but four famous ones. Perhaps I shall, Bob. Up next, we meet a man who climbs mountains to clean faces. Markham tells me a total of about 8,000 people have appealed their property appraisals. That's about one-third more than the number of appeals last year. Um, I'm sorry, I misread that, and it should read, we're talking about the threat of foreclosures, and it's, uh, the assessments, I'm sorry, the record number of assessments, a lot of people have been complaining about assessments in Broward County, the, the assessments here have gone up about 14%, just about an hour ago, the deadline expired to file an appeal of your assess assessment. Well, Sally, it's obvious that the semantic battle lines are being drawn. The people who are in favor of the tax are saying it's just one little old penny. The people against it are saying it is a 20% increase in your sales taxes. Both sides, of course, are correct when it comes to the uh, monetary situation. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the ad blitz actually carries some weight uh, with the people who are talking to 20%. I think that we are going to have to, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure which way we're going at this point. Look, let me help you out, Sally, okay? Let me explain to you why I'm on South Beach. I'm here because you will find in these parts a notable scarcity of people who would go to football games in that new stadium or to rock concerts in a new arena or modern dance in a new performing arts center or to conventions at an expanded convention center. Is there something in this tax proposal for people who would not even use the facilities they'd be paying for? That's the subject on the table tonight. Reporter Jill Beach talked with two local doctors tonight about that report, and what were their responses, Jill? First of all, Donna, they were very quick to point out that this is a preliminary report. And in fact, neither one of them has even seen that preliminary report because the journal hasn't had time to reach them yet. Cordoso and Lieberman, who are free pending an appeal of their conviction, had no comment on the civil suit. Attempts to contact Dr. Dubi Zubireta were unsuccessful. some new legal maneuvering. Mark Wallen has a story from our Broward News Center. Mark? Sally, the Alderdice brothers, William and James, were back in court again today, but to no avail. The, the game today, Cleveland Indians management fired manager Mike Ferraro today. It came as a complete shock. They didn't even let him finish his first year in his first 
managerial position, for Christ's sake, okay? They didn't even give him two years. At six, we talked about Cleveland Indians manager Mike Ferraro and the fact that he's been fired, would make, which makes him an ex-manager. In the process, I used a phrase which some of you found offensive. It was absolutely unintentional. My The winds are calm at the present time. The barometer 3002, rising during the hour. The relative humidity is 91%. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, the temperature at the Miami International Airport. You want to open this thing up, Keith? I paid the rent. Well, anyway, the temperature at Miami International Airport was 91 degrees. I think he went to sleep. Can I come in? <laughs> Thank you. Was, uh, by golly, it was 91 degrees at 4 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, it dropped down just 4 degrees to 87. That's kind of normal. But when the thunderstorm activity moved through, moved through, the temperature dropped down 13 degrees to 74. Shows you how cool it gets when the rainfall starts. Attorney for the students, Denise Sabah, spent some 10 hours between immigration courts and the downtown INS headquarters where she had to post bonds. Sabah represents the Libyan embassy in Washington. She says the students were not studying anything that could be a threat to our national security. send their students to school here because they feel that they can get a very good education. And uh, they also feel that, um, that uh, the, our courses here are good. And so needless to say, they are distressed over the fact that our government has taken this position. Now, it's still not known at this point whether or not these students will try to remain here or return to their country. But a few of the students we spoke to said they definitely want to go home after this experience here at Chrome. Okay, I'm glad to say that we have our technical problems straightened out now. We're going to go ahead with our interview with Dolphins head coach Don Shula. Of course, the Dolphins take on the Buffalo Bills in the regular season opener Sunday at 1 o'clock at Buffalo. Don, the, the Bills are under a new head coach this year, Kay Stevenson. Can we expect to see any major personnel changes, either offensively or defensively, that will give this team a new look this year? Well, Lee, as you know, he was their offensive... Okay, we gave it a, our best shot, but again, we had technical problems. We apologize. In the meantime, News Center 7 continues. Steve, back to you. Lavinia says she seeks medical attention more often since doctors are close by. I've been coming out here since I was a little girl, since I was a baby. Uh, my whole family, my sisters, because my mother got six kids. And the only time she really went out to Jackson is for childbirth. But in recent years, Beacon has been losing patience and a lot of money. A White House official tells NBC News that President Reagan has decided on a new national security advisor. He will appoint Mideast envoy Robert McFarland to replace William Clark, who was named last week as the new Secretary of the Interior. Emory King reports on the latest round of musical chairs, Washington style, the report on Robert McFarland replacing William Clark, who in turn is replacing James Watt. Do we have that report now? Apparently we don't have that report yet. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Going for their sixth win in a row. Coming up a little later, we'll have our weekly get together with Don Shula. The coach will talk about the upcoming jet game and that million dollar a year offer he has from New Jersey of the USFL. The Phillies and the Orioles are getting tuned up for game three of the World Series. That is neither the Phillies or the Orioles. That looked like a scene out of Nicaragua. They are not playing the World Series in Nicaragua. It is in Philadelphia tonight. It the heroic struggle that Cuban workers are putting up against the Yankee aggressor. Robert Hager tonight from Havana. The addition of U.S. 82nd Airborne Paratroopers to the action Castro predicted was a mistake. Well, obviously, we had a technical difficulty there from Havana tonight with Robert Hager of NBC News. Uh, be wise and be careful out there. We'll tell you more about our forecast for tomorrow and for the weekend coming up later on New Center 7. Steve and Sal uh, Jill? Got you again, Bob. Thank you. Sally's off tonight. Jill is sitting in. And we'll show you what's causing it. All coming up later on New Center 7. Sally and Jill? Thanks, Bob. Sally and Jill. <laughs> Sally and Jill. <laughs> coming up on New Center 7, <laughs> <clears throat> police taking aim at a critical grand jury report. And even crime can't make the camera blink. 
I'd like to introduce you to Bob Soper. Uh, Bob, this is Joe Beach. <laughs> Hi, Bob. I'm Hi, Joe. I thought yeah. you were nice Sally. You. You know? No, Sally's off. The operation wasn't a success, no. Bob. <laughs> you couldn't get rid of the mustache. <laughs> and I do know how to spell that four-letter word, R-A-I-N. Oh, right? boy. That's good. <laughs> You're relieved, I was aren't you? you? I <laughs> bet you were. <laughs> Those four-letter words bother me. <laughs> the bulls went on a rampage as the stock market set one record and came close to another until the New Hampshire victory two weeks ago. That makes the win very sweet for Mike Abrams, Hart State Chairman, standing by live with us now at Hart Campaign Headquarters in Miami. And UM students say no to tuition hikes. We'll have a live report next. Bob Soper's been tracking this latest storm all night. Bob, are we out of the woods yet? Not yet, Sally. Right over the top of our building at this point in time, we are continuing to see. I'm over here. Uh, we're continuing to see uh, heavy thunder shower activity and so on. I'll tell you what, Sally, let me join you over here, and I can tell you a little more about it. Bring out it, the camera. Uh, there we go. We've got a thunderstorm over the building right now, which may be affecting uh, some of our efforts technically. Uh, As the storm moves south into Broward, where New Center 7 Stephanie Stahl was on the scene. Well, as I guess you can tell, we seem to be encountering a few technical problems with Stephanie's report. We hope to bring it to you a little bit later in the program. Bernard Cow, NBC News, the State Department. Iran and Iraq have accused each other of violating their limited ceasefire by bombing and shelling. Robert, you, we heard your reaction a little bit earlier, and now you've had a few hours to reflect on what it's like being home. What do you have to say about it now? I, I say... Do I have volume here? You're okay. You're okay. Wait, now I got it too loud. Can okay. you hear me now? Got a future in television anyway. This is mine. <laughs> okay. Dana, can you hear us now? Yeah, wait a second. Mom is How about loud. your mother? Can your mother hear us? Can you hear me? No. You can't hear? Can you? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. But my mother can't. You hear now? No, no. You, you take care Dana, of it. Dana, we're fine. You just take care of it. My Go ahead and talk, Dana. We can hear yeah, you. My mother's not working. <laughs> okay. Don't turn it up so loud. <laughs> All right, go on. We're missing it. Okay, we seem to be having we're, some we're, problems okay, with this. Yeah, we're having electric. We'll try to come back a little bit later, Dana, when things work a little bit better, okay? Stay there. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks, Mark. I think we're about ready to attempt another try at uh, Dana Johnson, his mother Betty works. Can you hear us? Is everything fine now, Dana? Yes, fine. Dana, we want to ask you, first of all, we heard your reaction before. What's your reaction now, after you've been home a few hours, to being home? I think it's just great and wonderful, you know, that a man like Jesse, Reverend Jesse Jackson will come down and ask for some American prisoners. I think that was very, very humane of that man. You see, if you see this picture in the Sun's Centennial, oh, sure. June 28, 1984, and this man grasped me. They say it's with Jerry Jacoby, but they got it wrong. That's me. That's you, huh? Yes, yes, sir. So you agree with his trip? You think it was worthwhile? Yeah, it was great. I like it. I felt that man. When he, you know what he told me in this picture? When he grasped me like that? He said, son, he says, you're getting a second chance. He says, D you know, don't, don't get in any kind of trouble like this again. Well, there's no doubt you were in a lot of trouble, uh, either rightly or wrongly. But since you were an American and you were charged and not convicted of a crime, was your treatment any different from the uh, political Cuban prisoners there? Yes, I was. How so? My food was, well, I, I got more. What, what did you get to eat? I got more of the same thing just about what they got. What did you have to eat? What, what's we a had more diet? than what they had. We had buckets from our families, like my mother, who brings stuff down to us. Food and supplies, and we, so we got water buckets and everything to store our stuff in. These political prisoners, they don't have nothing. They don't have no communications. It's That's why these people went to the United States and they met people they don't even know. They never even met them, but they're, they're relatives. It's our impression that the prisoners like yourself ended up gaining a lot of respect for the political prisoners over there. Can you tell us about that? I think these political people have a right to complain 
you know, to, uh, right. I, 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 uh, this picture here, I go by this man, this, this man's ideas. He has a right to be pissed off at Fidel Castro. Okay. Dana, Mrs. Wentz? Dana, let's, yeah, let's widen out on your mother for a minute. Mrs. Wirtz? Yes. Would you tell us there's only a mother? After tonight, Jill is going to be going back to her regular spot on the new news, and there's going to be a new person sitting next to me, Peter Ford. I want to say thanks to Jill, and I want to let you know it's been fun working with her, and I hope you'll join me Monday in welcoming Peter Ford to our community. And I'll look for all of you at noon every day, Monday through Friday, with Peter Lundquist. Two Peters. That's right. You know, it, it, up until then, Something it like was that, getting... Up until then, it was getting later earlier, right? But now it's going to be an hour later. So we see. Later. You, you fall back. You set your clock back one hour at 2 o'clock Sunday morning. So in actual fact, I misspoke. Sunset will be at 5.43. That's right. It would be back. Sunday so. night. Back one hour. 5.43. So it, is, it is later earlier. Let's well, it gets get darker earlier. It get, it'll get darker earlier. It'll be 5.43 when it gets dark instead of 6.43. Okay. Set your clocks back. Thank you, Bob. Set your clocks back one hour. <laughs> and, Peter, now that you know it's so popular, I wonder if you're going to be wearing any makeup <laughs> on the street anytime soon. Not on the street. And I doubt if we'll see Don or any of the guys wearing mascara anywhere. Uh, yeah, no, I've seen that. a lot of men wear makeup in TV, but they don't wear mascara That's and sad. eyeliner and things like that. I think style's fine. Style's great, but vanity sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> with that, <laughs> Bob's up next, and he says the weather could not be better. The forecast is next. Stay with us. So Sally and Peter, a lot of car owners are going to be getting notified about the recalls. That has to be one of the biggest. Tremendous. It's huge. Sure is. And people wonder why uh, so many of us buy imports, don't they? <laughs> they do. Coming up next on this Monday night. And a little later on, the Barbara Streisand of the lunch counter crowd. New Center 7 returns in just a moment. Howard Gary calls it quits tonight at 11. Well, we're going to get the sports end of this parade and talk to Brett Lewis about what's going on in his neck of the woods. Brett, where are you? What? I got a sudden feeling that I'm on live television. Is that the case? Well, if it is, I'll just start uh, talking about Tempe, Arizona, the site of this year's Fiesta Bowl. And it, the stadium is right behind you. you <clears throat> Excuse me. Tonight, the state is turning to law enforcement on all fours. Martina, the winner, 6464, but she says she didn't have much fun. Conditions. You just sort of try to get through well, uh, Martina didn't want to talk to us very long. Uh, and there's the crowd, and here's Martina. Let me try to tell got a clue. Uh, Chris Everett Lloyd also won today in uh, three sets. Kathy Jordan, Alicia Molden, and Bettina Bungie were upset, but I'm not. Tampa Bay Buccaneers have decided on a head coach to replace John McKay. Job went to Lehman Bennett, the former Atlanta Falcons coach. Bennett with the hat on here. <laughs> Lehman says he's awful glad to be there. Okay, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, how severe is the problem of mooning in Fort Lauderdale? Who does it and why? For it's all this week on New Center 7. Really taking some shape and getting some extra moisture input off the Gulf of Mexico and continuing to, uh, excuse me, Rick, uh, just trying to do the weather here, uh, quite a lot of shower activity along that frontal system as that high pressure cell that is moving away from us is pumping moisture back up out of the Gulf of Mexico there. Well, that is New Center 7 to this hour. We're going to be back tonight at 11. I'm Sally Fitz. And I'm Peter Ford. For Stephanie, Bert, Brett, and Bob, and all of us on the New Center 7 team, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you tonight. who's next. Good night. I'm Brett Lewis, coming up in sports, an area driver sets his sights. What? I'm Peter Ford. And I'm Sally Fitz. Coming up on New Center 7 tonight, the first flight of Cuban criminals home in Havana. 
A sugar scam turns sour and feel the heat at another South Florida hot spot. These stories and more next on News Center 7 tonight. The following does not necessarily reflect the opinion of Burger King. By offering three new burgers, Burger King only proves they'll stop at nothing to make America hungry. Two juicy flame broil patties, okay, but a pizza double burger with mozzarella, a taco double burger with jalapeno cheese and taco sauce, and the mushroom double Swiss burger with tender mushrooms. Burger King, you've gone too far. Has Burger King gone too far? There are three new double burgers. Maybe, but only for a limited time. Well, tax tips to keep your tax trouble. Tax tips to keep you out of tax trouble. That and more, just two minutes away. <laughs> Rolling in to the Miami Grand Prix. The main race ending just a little while ago. It was a classic climax to what's quickly become a world-class event. Just ahead from the news center, we'll talk live with the promoter of the Grand Prix, Rick Sanchez, about the black flag controversy. That is Ralph Sanchez, rather. Tax savings. Tax saving tips for seniors. New Center 7 will be right back. Stay with us. How to move the huge surplus fleet from Florida to the Northeast and Midwest in just a couple Well, that's a problem with the tape there, obviously. It but was. Here's her new star, new star 7 satellite report. Tonight, another strike looming over the head of Pan American Airways. This time, it's the flight attendants who are threatening to walk out at midnight if a new contract is not reached. Negotiations are going on right now in Washington, D.C. However, local union officials are not talking to reporters because of a federal gag order. Uh, you had the advent of the consultants who came along and said, well, you're... You've got to get uh, more of a show going here. And uh, we didn't used to call them shows. We used to call them programs. And we didn't give a damn whether the people were entertained or not. That's the wrong story. We're going to try this one again tonight. Another strike is looming over the head of Pan American Airlines. And uh, this time, it's the flight attendants. They are threatening to walk. Right now, we'll be trying to get to that video as it becomes available. Negotiations are going on right now in Washington, D.C. We can tell you that. With me is the general manager of this 33rd annual Dade County Youth Fair. Can you tell us more about it? Well, if you haven't come out to the fair yet, get in the car and grab the family and the kiddies and mom and dad and come on out. We're going to be open until 11 o'clock tonight. The system in Broward County, by the way, has weakened uh, since we had that report from Skyscam 7. And it's now heading off the coast, so I don't know. That was an exciting Sky report. Skyscam. Did I say the wrong thing? Skycam. Never mind. I'm not going to say it again. Skycam 7. Skycam 7. He's got it. He's got Sky <laughs> Not, did I say Sky Scam? Sky Scam. I wasn't supposed to say that. Sky boss, Cam. boss has a fit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look and see what we've got. For Irene Richard, welcome to the Sky Scam. I knew I'd say it. That's uh, i it. Never mind. Where where are you, Sally? Or Irene or Hortense? <laughs> up next, New Center Seven helps you pay up if you owe monkey to uh, money <laughs> to Uncle Sam. We'll be right back. 